the all-new Megane E-Tech electric crossover is another serious budge up from battery technology as it starts to shove combustion engines out of the mainstream. After all, the Megane is a trusty old member of the family hatchback class, but this new car is purely electric, albeit to be sold alongside the plug-in hybrid Megane for a couple of years. This, in fact, is because this design was originally conceived as the styling for a performance version of the new car. As design boss Lawrence Van Den Acker told us, everyone liked it so much that we made it the standard styling. That will also explain the 20 inches wheels that will be standard fit on higher spec versions, then. This is also an important car for Renault, since it's the first model to sit on its new EV-specific modular platform, the CMF EV. In this guise, that means front-wheel drive and a slimline mattress of lithium-ion batteries with a usable capacity of either 40 kWh or 60 kWh, which translates to a WLTP range of 186 or 292 miles. DC rapid charging can be done at a rate of up to 130 kW on the 60 kWh model, which is good for a 10-80% to charge in half an hour. Expect the 40 kWh model to have slower charging, the CCS rapid charging plug might even be optional, but every Megane E-Tech Electric will be able to take 22 kW from an AC charger. As for how it drives? Well, Renault banded about the phrase, this is the GTI of the class in its press conference, which Volkswagen might not be too pleased about, nor Renault Sport, we imagine. Calling it a hot hatch is overstating the truth, but on the evidence of our drive in a 60 kilowatt hours pre-production car, it would be fair to say that this is the most fun you can have in an electric family car in the 30,000 to 40,000 pounds price range. Provided you can forgive the peculiarly squarish wheel, the steering response is quick yet light, even when weighted up in sport mode, and works well with a front end that's keen to dive into a corner. You're also given a good sense of how much traction is available and precise enough throttle response that you can adjust your cornering line intuitively with your right foot. Which is good, because the biggest bugbear we have is the car's tendency to spin its wheels up and squirm its way out of a corner if you unleash anything close to the 215 brake horsepower on tap. However, the roads were damp and we're told that the engineers plan to sort this before the official launch, so we will reserve judgment for now. Ride comfort is good, potentially getting on for the best in the class, in fact. There's none of the stodgy post-bump wallowing that some EVs suffer. It can feel brittle over expansion joints, but our test car rode on those 20 inches wheels, and even with that factored in, the damping and bump absorption are good, especially since the Megane's heft is neatly tied down in cornering. That's largely thanks to a curb weight of 1,624 kg, which is a result of new lighter battery and motor technology, weight savings in the aluminium door panels and a new heat pump and air conditioning system that more efficiently reuses energy lost to help heat the cabin. For some context, the curb weight is still a disappointing 300 kg or so more than that of a petrol-powered Volkswagen Golf, but it's also around 200 kg lighter than a 58 kWh Volkswagen ID3, so the gains are clearly paying off. It certainly shows in terms of the handling vim, the well-judged ride and the impressive efficiency. That the 60 kWh Megane manages a WLTP range of 292 miles, much the same as the famously efficient Kia e Niro 64 kWh, despite a 4 kWh, smaller usable battery capacity, says a LOT. We found the Megane efficient in the real world, too. On a fairly fast test route that included motorway and some sport mode, worthy country roads in middling temperatures, it still delivered an indicated 3.5 miles per kilowatt hour, or around 210 miles to a charge. Using the heavier regenerative braking modes could even eat that up further, there are three to choose from, including one that's virtually a one-pedal driving mode, plus you can turn it off entirely for maximum freewheeling. It bleeds in predictably and proves very easy to get used to, and you can toggle through the modes easily via steering wheel mounted paddles for maximum control, even if these tiny plastic appendages appear to be from a child's toy. We would like better brake pedal feel, since the transition from Regan braking to the friction brakes can still feel inconsistent, but this is a criticism that can be leveled at almost every EV currently on sale. Inside the cabin, the textured fake wood trim looks peculiar, but otherwise the interior feels really smart, and the electrically adjustable seats of our test car were supportive and comfy, if a little high set for some. Naturally, you get all the touchscreen that you can wave your apps at with the Megane's huge, portrait-oriented interface. 
The inbuilt Google Maps and Siri Voice Assistant are brilliant, not only because they are intuitive to use but also because they automatically give you a fairly accurate estimate of how much battery charge you will have left when you get to your destination. On top of that, there's Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay, making this about the best software package in the class. The screen itself isn't graphically as sharp as some others, and it can be a bit difficult to use when you're driving, since there's nowhere to rest your wrist for a precise prod. If it's good enough for Tesla, though, it's easily forgiven, too, because, praise be, there are also straightforward, proper climate control buttons. Two tall adults will be comfy in the back seats and the flat floor will even make a third occupant fairly at ease, although the headroom might make six-footers feel a bit anxious about their coiffure. Still, that EV-specific platform and the wheels being at the chassis far extremities have made way for usefully more legroom than you get in the Golf, for instance, if a touch less than in the ID3. The 440-liter boot is also big, but much of that capacity is in its depth, so it will accommodate your Labrador easily but only after it has steeplechased over the high lip and down the sheer drop on the other side. The 60-40th split folding rear seats leave a huge step up from the boot floor, too, 